All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with our first live go to training. I want to go ahead and welcome everyone to psychology of play. I want to go ahead and work to um, turn my webcam on and introduce myself in person. Um, I know we have some folks that are scheduled and they might be running a few minutes late to go ahead and come. They can just join us when they um, when they're able to pop in. We'll go ahead and get started with the material for the sake of time and then that way we can um, allow some time at the end if if anyone has any questions or concerns, we can also take a look at um, what activities we have due uh, this week as well with our Wednesday and Sunday deadlines. All right, so I just want to say hello in person um, to everybody. My name is Katie Bonafili. Again, welcome you to Psychology of Play. Um, I am going to be working with you this month, so I definitely thank you for carving out some time today to meet with me and go over our Module 1 material. We'll meet each week. Um, there is a link that I supplied to everybody in our go-to training activity, the weekly activity, that I would really appreciate if you would would fill out. Um, this allows me to better know what days and times you might be available for go-to training this month. Um, so I definitely want to try to uh, work with everybody the best that I can according to your schedules. Um, I saw that we had some folks on Eastern Standard Time and Pacific Standard Time and we have a couple of folks that are Central Standard Time. So I definitely want to try to um, allow as many of us to connect as possible. So Hopefully you've had a time, um, had a chance to take a look at my intro video and um, learn a little bit about me. Um, I can't wait to learn more about you, especially your creative passions as we move through our material this month. Um, so if there's any questions throughout, um, feel free to raise your hand or feel free um, to throw the question out in the chat box as well. Um, I'll try to keep an eye on both of those and if I miss someone or over overlook something, um, please know I'm not trying to ignore you. Um, we can always go back to it um, at the end of the session. I'll stick around and hang out. Um, so again, welcome to Psychology of Play, and let's go ahead and get started with our material. And as a friendly reminder note for anyone who might be watching this as an archive, um, the links that we do use in session that I refer to in our material section, they will be posted for you underneath our uh, description part on our YouTube channel. So the playlist for the go-to trainings, you'll want to go ahead and look in the description aspect for the links to all of the videos that we use in each session every week. So for some of you that have had a chance to look over our materials in our activities on LAO, you will notice that in your weekly challenge folder, there is a suggested programs list. And I'll pull that up at the end of the session if anyone wants to take a look at that together. But what my goal is, is to also introduce web tools to you this month. Um, they can be really effective when it comes to putting together presentations as you move into future coursework. So I like for us to kind of get acclimated to using some of them in this month and um and that's by giving you the choice of different web tools. You don't have to use a web tool. Um, you can always use programs that are on the computer you're using as well as uh, Google and other online hosts. Um, so they are just suggested. It's not all inclusive, but I always like to support you getting to you know, sort of use these tools a bit better in practice and brush up on some of the skills, um, you know, such as adding audio or video aspect and so forth. Um, so anyways, it's kind of like a practice month when it comes to using maybe some new software for some, and that's absolutely okay. Um, that is exactly what my goal is for uh, this month when it comes to giving you some creative freedom when it comes to these weekly challenge projects.
So this first, um, our first presentation, I created our slides in a web tool called Storybird and it's storybird.com and basically you can choose from a variety of artwork that they supply as templates and you can go ahead and add your writing. Um, so this might appeal to some and it's definitely something worth checking out if um, you'd like to work with this program and you'll get a little preview as I move through the slides um, because I've built the uh, slideshow today within this web tool. So our objectives for today's session are going to be to identify the importance of play, discuss the definition of play, we're going to go over some play history and review the patterns of play from your module one playbook and then adventure through um, some of the play personalities if we have some time. Um, we have a great play personalities video for you on the platform as well and it gives you some snippets and it kind of adds some visual stimulation to the reading in your module one playbook so um, I would definitely say that's worth checking out and all of these um, you're gonna need to know and review in your playbook of course um, just for your discussion post that's due this week as well as your quiz and then also your challenge project so let's talk about play um, so I always ask everyone that comes to the session initially, you know, when you saw psychology of play on your schedules, I always like to ask what were some of your first initial thoughts. Um, so anytime I'm asking questions throughout the session, again, feel free to raise your hand or feel free to throw those answers out in the chat box as well. So were there any initial thoughts when you saw psychology of play on your schedule? What came to mind when you saw that? Sometimes um, I've had some responses in regards to, you know, play in regards to theater and then um, sometimes just playing in general and not really knowing what the class is about. And that's OK. Um, I'm hopeful that by the end of today's session that you'll have a little bit better idea about how you can incorporate play both on personal scale as well as a professional scale. Um, I love teaching psychology of play, um, psychology in general, and so I really love that, um, you know, this subject I feel is really extremely relevant to everyone, um, especially when it comes to your career. So again, um, having some of that flexibility throughout the class this month to play a bit and learn some new tools and take away hopefully some, you know, new skills with you as you move into future coursework. So there's a lot of evolving research around um, these concepts concepts of play. So it's really exciting. All right, so we have adults equal serious, kind of all work, no play. Um, so I want you, I want to ask you guys to take a minute to think about a person in your life that is all work, no play. Um, you know, and and I want you to really answer the question. You know, is that something that you're personally striving for? Um, just sort of that seriousness all of the time. Um, sometimes we're often told that we have to go to school and get a good job and work to support our family, and there's no time for play. Play is for kids. Um, we're adults. And so I always like to encourage everyone to think about any messages that were relayed or insinuated between childhood to adulthood that supported that type of message. Let's head over to our material section and we're going to watch our first video clip. And if you would click on the elevator clip in the material section and take a moment to watch that, it's about two or three minutes long. And when you're done watching the video, go ahead and come back and just type elevator in the chat box for me and I'll know that you're all set and we can move on.
awesome. Thanks so much for typing elevator for me in the chat box. So I'm like, how boring are stairs now? So taking the time to dance and sing for a minute on the elevator might have changed their whole day. When they get to the office, may, you know, they could be smiling and, you know, totally change their attitude about work just in a matter of minutes and something so quick. So sometimes just a little play break, it only takes, you know, a few moments just to kind of step away and refresh. So the best part about play is that play brings joy. And if you don't have joy in your life, then you probably don't have too much excitement going on. So maybe just going through that sort of mundane routine, um, you know, maybe not feeling real positive. Um, maybe you just feel the weight of all the responsibilities that you have on your shoulders as an adult. Um, well, now we know that play brings joy. And so I ask you guys, what happens when you feel joy? How do you feel when you have joy? I know that when I feel joy and, you know, I'm in a good mood, definitely there's more of a smile on my face. I have, um, you know, more positive feelings going on, more positive mindset, so to speak, um, you know, whether it's personally or either, you know, at work. So research shows that our need for play does not go away when we grow up. Sometimes we have jobs that we work to just earn a paycheck and we have probably all had jobs that were not related to what we were passionate about in the past. Great point, Teresa. Yeah, less stress too, exactly. So sort of feeding into that positivity versus the negativity. So I'm pretty sure that, you know, we've all had jobs that we've done, you know, just to collect a check and pay the bills and do what we needed to do at that moment. But if we think about our favorite job that we've had when we were growing up, what did that look like? You know, so I want to ask you guys what your favorite job was growing up. If you think back, um, and maybe it was even something that you, um, you know, worked for a job recently that was your favorite. Did you guys have, do you have something that sticks out as your favorite favorite job position. I know for me, um, something that sticks out is when I used to work at a video store. And my favorite position was, you know, um, when I was working on, you know, getting to where I wanted to do as far as teaching and counseling and what I'm doing now, um, which is the balance that I've strived and gone to school for. And I'm really happy with building up to that point when I had to do something just to pay the bills, working at a video store. And I might be dating myself a little bit, but um, back when DVDs were just coming out and it was still predominantly VHS, um, it was you know, the most fun to me. I had, you know, a blast every single time I went to work and being able to review trailers before, you know, movies hit the shelves and so forth. I just, we always made it a really fun time and I had a lot of great coworkers. So I'm seeing um, in the chat box, so film production and, uh, and being a medic in the Air Force, that's a really interesting job. Um, yeah, I mean, if you think about those jobs that you had and what were some of your favorite aspects, you know, um, think about how in that position, being playful, you know, on that job, how did it benefit you in any way? So the positive, you know, the positiveness that you took from that position. And if we think about how playfulness was involved and we were mentioning, Teresa, you were mentioning stress and stuff before. Um, I'm thinking an Air Force medic might have some, a lot of stress with it, but if there's moments where depending on who you're interacting with, you know, as far as patients and colleagues and sort of bringing some stress relief and some fun and some laughter, you know, to the job, it's definitely worthwhile, especially in those really stressful positions. So play at work. I'm going to try to go ahead and increase my screen size a bit here for, for you all. And just uh, to throw it out there, we're experiencing some stormy weather on my end. So just let me know in the, uh, okay, you too, LaCrystal, yeah. Um, I'm experiencing stormy weather too. So if I go um, in or out um, as far as the audio is concerned or for some reason my screen just, um, you know, just let me know, um, throw out a note in the chat box uh, to me. And uh, I can always pause or go back if we miss something. 
So play at work. So, um, so as we were just saying, um, play is often looked down upon at work, you know, um, hopefully not, but in a lot of places it is. So who really wants to work with someone that is perhaps miserable all the time or is always kind of the negative Nancy, you know, at work? Um, perhaps they hate life, they're negative all the time, they can kind of have that tunnel vision, so to speak. And um, sometimes they have an inability to uh, see new and exciting ideas. Perhaps they hate change because this means more work. Um, so people who play see things completely different. As we have learned, play can bring joy, which can lower our stress and make us more productive. So you may think, I can't play, I have to work. However, if you stop to take a break, we watched in that elevator clip, if we stop to take a break and play for a moment, it might make your work that much easier. And that's why we have to play. So play can actually make you have less stress. Teresa, you know, she told us that in the chat box. It can help us to be more productive. You're more fun to be around. Um, you may come up with the next, you know, fantastic creative idea. And all of a sudden you may have ideas to solve a problem you may have never seen before. And your relationships are going to be better because of all of this. So all of these things are definitely going to help you be successful in your industries, which are going to be really creative. And so it's nice to be able to step away and come back and be able to problem solve and look at something with, you know, a new creative eye. So I, I'm going to go back over to the chat box. I saw it scrolling a little bit. So I want to see, um, see what I might be missing. Um, so sirens, Okay. Playing with the ambulance sirens, uh, not severe weather sirens. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We get you. Yeah. Some of us are having uh, inclement weather. So yeah, definitely playing with ambulance sirens. That sounds pretty fun to me. Um, so before we get into how to define play, I want to take us back to the beginning a bit. So we probably all associate play with children, and this will help us learn more about play by looking into our first experiences with it. Um, so I want to, instead of using the chat box, um, it might be new for some of you, it might not be new for others. I wanna go ahead and use a new tool. It's a digital white, whiteboard. Um, and I want to kind of either draw out or write what our favorite childhood activities or pastimes were on the whiteboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my screen from our presentation in Storybird over to the digital whiteboard and I'm gonna share it with you. So I just threw the link over into the chat box. So if you grab that link and put it into your browser, you should be able to log in with me in real time here on my screen. And using the pencil over here, um, there's also an eraser and then there's colors here on the left-hand side as well. Um, go ahead and you know draw out, uh, text, type, however you want to, um, what were some of your favorite pastimes or activities that you did as a kid growing up? And if you haven't taken a peek already, it pertains to our discussion board post that's due tomorrow evening um, where we get into that. And for some of you that maybe popped over onto the board, you probably saw my post already, um, my example post to help get the week started. That one of my favorite activities that I used to do as a kid was actually build indoor blanket forts with my younger sister. I have a younger sister. She's about four years younger than me. And um, anytime our mom 
would allow us to um, somewhat destroy the living room, especially during uh, rainy or stormy weather. We would go ahead and take all of the furniture and put it in any type of direction that we felt in that moment and take blankets and sheets and um, you know we had a dog so to grab the dog bed and the couch pillows and rugs and anything we could and we would just go ahead and make forts and we would sometimes break them down and recreate it in a different fashion we would have multiple forts going on and so forth so all right so I'm seeing um, I'm seeing write so writing as a child so maybe some uh, story telling personality going on there uh, and then all outdoors so outdoors active um, so to me that says maybe some uh, kinesthetic qualities going on as well and then I see the tree with the tire swing and climbing the trees very cool very cool So definitely, um, if something else, uh, oh, that's you, Teresa, climbing the tree. Nice. I like your tree. You did that really well um, so quickly. You're a pro at using the uh, digital whiteboard already. Uh, if you haven't done the week one activity already, you could definitely feel free to use this, you know, favorite activity to apply the concepts to for your post. Um, if something else sticks out, you know, definitely feel free to use that as well. But basically just trying to identify some of that early early play in our developmental stages and how it helped, you know, form into the play that we type that we like to engage in nowadays. So that's the purpose of that, you know, week one discussion. So anyways, if you haven't used um, this aweapp.com before, definitely make a note of it. It's really great when it comes to uh, working on things live when you're like in groups and stuff like that or working on team activities. So it's a great way to do some brainstorming and, um, you know, other activities on it when it comes to maybe uh, working remotely together. So anyways, just to introduce something, you know, maybe new to you. All right, so for this class, um, sometimes uh, I always like to throw out that sometimes students get stuck and they don't know what to do for the assignments, uh, especially since we have that creative component in the, the weekly challenge projects that's due on Sunday. So, um, so when you are thinking about even your challenge project, we just did that little activity to get you thinking about your discussion post. When you're looking over the challenge assignments, um, you know, I want you to think about the things that you played, you know, as as a kid and how creative you were. And I really want you to try to tap into that, um, you know, sort of childhood creativity, if you will, um, you know, definitely into your personality and the things that you like to do now as an adult. And sometimes we can sit back and say, hey, I play all the time. I play every day. I know what things I love to do. And then maybe some of us have kind of gotten away from that. And so it might be a little bit more challenging. And that's okay too. Um, and if there's any questions about the assignments I mentioned at the beginning of the session, we can spend some time on that at the, uh, at the end of our go-to. So research shows that there are many benefits of play when it comes to learning. So play not just reduces stress and makes children more socially competent, um, which evidence suggests that it does. It matters also because play supposedly improves working memory as well as self-regulation. And so in other words, it makes kids um, sharper and better behaved. So ironically, by shortchanging them on play in favor of all academics, we may actually be inhibiting their development. Um, so the message is this, the emphasis is uh, you know, now on standardized testing a lot and on attempting to constantly monitor and to constantly measure and quantify what students are learning. And this has forced teachers to spend more of the school day engaged in so-called direct instruction and has substantially reduced or eliminated opportunities that children have for exploring and interacting and learning on their own. 
So recess has, in many districts, um, vanished from the schedule entirely. Um, and after school, sometimes um, parents might be looking to shuttle their kids from activity to activity, and this can be depriving them of unstructured time alone or with friends. Um, so some argue that play continues to be dismissed from the classroom, and many people remain skeptical at just how flu influential it can be. Um, you may have kids or remember being in school as a child, and you know, I, I always like to throw out the question, um, do you think that our schools now or your school back then, when you were in school, did they support and value and embrace play and that unstructured playtime? Um, again, I might be dating myself a little bit here, but um, at least when I was in elementary school, I can still remember having, you know, art and music and playing outside recess, playing, you know, dodgeball and kickball and basketball and, and having that unstructured time a couple times a day and um, really just being able to get out that energy instead of, you know, having to sit there and just remain focused for so long. Um, so I know that I felt the benefits um, of that. All right, so thinking about it today, as an adult, I want you to think about your idea of play. Um, okay, Teresa, uh, we had the same as you were describing. My kids, not so much, but with the grandkids, they are getting back to that. That's refreshing. Yeah, I found the same thing with my, um, my nieces and nephews. Uh, my husband and I, a little background, we have eight nieces and nephews, and they range from six months old to age 19, so kind of every developmental stage there. And, um, and I had that play, like you're saying, uh, Teresa, and then some of my, our older uh, nieces and nephews, they didn't have that so much, and it's very much about standardized testing and the score that you get, and I'm noticing with the younger nieces and nephews that there seems to be re recess brought back in, and art and music, and one of our nieces really, really just grasped onto that, um, and I love that about her. I really want her to grasp onto, um, you know, her creative side and be able to have time to spend on the activities that she enjoys throughout the day. So when we're thinking about our idea, you know, think about your ideas of play as um, an adult and throw out in the chat box if you want, you know, raise your hand, I'll unmute you, you know, what are some things that you do now as an adult that you consider play at this stage? And I'll try to remember, too, that you guys are um, typing stuff out in the chat box as well and give you an extra moment to do that. Hi, Teresa. Are you there? Yes. Hi. Nice um, to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Um, I babysit my great nephew who is uh, about five years old. So we do sword fighting and uh, kicking soccer ball and putting uh, little animals in the bat cave, um, but it's the same with my grandkids, but they're also a huge into Minecraft, but as far as myself, I'm beta testing a computer game right now. For me, something like that, adventure games that have a story base mm -hmm. to them, that, that's, that's my play. I, I'm not uh, into sports or anything like that, although I do play pool. That's oh, okay. Really Billiards? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, some might consider that a sport, you know, for sure. And then, um, and then really it's about what, you know, what you're finding fun, you know, for, for yourself. I know for me, you know, and we'll get more into that, you know, it's like, you know, do it yourself projects around, around our house and stuff like that and design aspect. And, um, so yeah, so it's, it's, you're enjoying it. And so it's fun to you. And, and that's really what matters, you know, at the end of it. Awesome. Thank you for, thank you for sharing, Teresa. All right. And I'm also seeing, uh, cards and bowling in the chat box as well and NASCAR. Yeah, definitely. So I just kind of want you guys to get thinking about, you know, things that you do for yourself that that you enjoy, that helps you to relieve stress and um, helps kind of put you in that positive, positive mood that we were talking about.
And so sometimes it can take us a little, you know, a minute to kind of like, well, you know, what, what do I enjoy? And for others, it's like, we can think of some things right off, right off the top of our head, it seems. So we've talked briefly about, you know, some of the benefits of play in children and adults. And when it comes to defining play, um, we might have our own definition and, um, and then also we're basing that probably, you know, on our experiences. So I always like to throw out that I am not here to tell you how to play or that your ideas behind play are wrong. I'm here to just add to your knowledge. Um, in our materials, it talks about Stuart Brown, who wrote the book, Play, How It Shapes the Brain, Opens the Imagination, and Invigorates the Soul. He's the founder of the National Institute for Play. Um, this is what he thinks about play and his definition based on his research. He talks about how to define play, but that it can be difficult because it means different things to different people, which makes sense. So let's look at what he came up with. There are seven properties total um, that he came up with. And as we're going through these, I want you to think about your favorite play activities that we mentioned um, or if something else pops in your head and see if that fits with these properties. So we have apparently purposeless. So this sets play apart from other activities that, uh, that are maybe more goal directed. Um, so when we play, we are not trying to gain anything out of it. Um, we play simply for the sake of playing, which is why there are people that say, it's a waste of time. Um, we're not going to make any money out of it and things like that. And then we have voluntary. And it's not a requirement. The play is something that you are volunteering to do. Um, when we play, we are doing so volunteer voluntarily. And as a side note, we try to encourage you to play in this class. Um, but of course, we run up against this quality. Uh, as you're required to do certain activities and assignments, and as you go through the class, um, you're given opportunities to choose various options. So hopefully by having assignment options and having creative freedom with different web tools and other pieces of software that you might be interested in learning more about, or um, you know it's fresh and new for you and you wanna, you wanna learn about it, Hopefully this choice um, will give you a chance to access the quality of being voluntary to allow you to play within the assignments and the activities that you complete for class. Um, so always like to throw that out there. Inherent attraction. So we play because it's fun. You feel naturally drawn to this activity. Um, you may not be able to specifically describe or explain what draws you to this activity, but the connection you feel is inborn. Um, it's exciting, it's arousing as a cure for boredom. Then we have freedom from time just getting lost in the activity. Um, so think of that time when you were engaged in an activity and you lost all sense of time while you were completing it. Where did the time go? You looked up at the clock and next thing you knew it was hours later than what you thought it was or you started the activity during the daylight and now it's dark outside. Um, you may have looked up from a painting, maybe a computer monitor, um, sports practice, a recording session, any other activity, and realize that, um, you know, just that amount of time had passed, that significant amount of time. So this is an example of play. Um, we are not thinking about what we have to do next. We are simply just enjoying that moment. Next, we have diminished consciousness of self. And similarly, similarly, excuse me, to losing that track of time that I was mentioning, some activities are so enthralling that we also lose track of ourselves for a brief period. Um, we're not worried about how we look, if we look awkward, or maybe we don't look as smart as we would like to, or goofy, um, you know, all of those worries go away. We're sort of in that zone and not worried about what others are thinking about us. Um, and what it looks like to anyone else. We're simply just enjoying it. 
and then we have improvisational potential. So we're open to change. We are not locked into this sort of rigid way of doing things. We might be engaged in totally irrelevant stuff, has nothing to do with our normal activities. Therefore, we're opening ourselves up to new behaviors, any new ideas. Uh, the play process is one that allows for improvising and making changes to the activity. Um, this is where we um, we are seeing things in a different way and sort of having those fresh insights and maybe some of those new creative ideas coming in. And then we have the continuation desire. So if we are in true play, um, we have the desire to continue doing just that. The pleasure we get out of the play drives us to keep doing it. We are going to find ways to do it. Um, you know, what are the things in my life I want to keep doing? When it's over, I love it so much. I want to find time and I want to go out and I want to do it again. Um, this week you're going to be seeing if what you consider play falls under these seven qualities. Um, using these qualities of play, we can begin to decipher between the true play and the other activities. So some of the activities um, you might have thought were play, maybe they don't satisfy all of these categories. All right, so characteristics of play. Um, we have decided that play can be valuable. Um, in Stuart Brown's book, play has more to do about the attitude and the motivation than the specific activity. So not so much focus on that specific activity, but sort of that um, emotional side. So you could have six people outside playing basketball, for instance, but only one of those six people is really into it and not thinking about anything else no other worries. They're so involved in the enjoyment of being into the game and that's true play. So for those other five then you know ideally there's another activity that they can identify those feelings and associations with. So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Um, you know, children are more likely to engage in true play at 100%. Um, as adults, while we are playing, we might not be completely 100% into it because it can be difficult if we're feeling stressed. So depending where we are sort of on that stressometer um, and our obligations, responsibilities, uh, you know, carrying that weight on our shoulders, so to speak. So in adults, play is commonly blended with other motives having to do with adult responsibilities. And um, perfect example was the example that I shared where sort of killing two birds with one stone. Um, I enjoy doing things around the house, but then at the same time, there's that added benefit of doing things to improve my home as well. Um, so, you know, trying to find that, trying to find that balance. Um, so that's why in everyday conversation, we tend to talk about children playing and about adults bringing perhaps a playful attitude or a playful spirit to their activities. Um, so again, all about that attitude and that motivation during the activity. So while well, you're probably thinking this class is about play, we actually get to play. Um, and in this course, you're going to get the chance to put your play skills into action. Um, so again, highlighting having those options with the weekly challenge um, projects. So that way you can pick what appeals to you. Um, sometimes I've gotten feedback from students saying that they really like both and they have a hard time choosing which assignment to do. Um, I always like to, you know, say whichever one you're drawn to the most you know definitely look through both options reflect on it um, think about what one you would enjoy um, actually doing so that way it doesn't always feel like okay I'm working I'm doing something for class you know to turn something in I know I have to meet a deadline but really try to focus on what one you might actually enjoy doing the most or if any creative ideas about how to present that project the creative portion if those come to mind when you're looking through the option so another way is to encourage um, I want to encourage everybody to challenge themselves with new technology this month so again you know going back to that creative portion and using web tools or other software that you've been wanting to dabble in um, and then also I'll be asking you to apply the concepts you learn to real world life um, ideally through having more choices and options in the class you get to have more fun through your work while maintaining that boundary of working within your deadline frames 
So I want to take a look at the value of play as an adult. If you guys would head on over to your material section and click on the link, the value of play. And um, again, in just a couple minutes, let me know when you're all set by typing done um, or something of that nature in the chat box and we can move forward. Great, thanks so much. Can everybody still hear me okay? If you could just type yes for me in the chat box, that would be great. Okay, awesome. We had a big, um, we had a bunch of wind and stuff come through, so I just wanted to make sure I was still connected to you. All right. So I highlighted that this week we're going to be asking you, um, asking everybody in class to go back and take a look at their childhood, try to remember the play activities that you all enjoyed growing up. Um, like I mentioned, sometimes that might not always be um, so easy for some, but easy for others. And um, some of the activities maybe you still enjoy today, either you still participate in them or through kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, that type of thing. Um, so to understand more about um, your own play history, we want you to look at your own patterns of play and play personality that have shaped your current use of play. Um, so as we move on, um, I just want to mention that this section of the material explores um, three different areas So in module one. Um, so the types of play, the patterns of play, and the play personalities. And for the sake of time, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to discuss the patterns of play. Like I mentioned before, there's, um, there's a great uh, video, you know, as far as the play personalities, and we go over the play personalities in your reading, um, you know, such as the kinesthet, the joker, and so forth. And you'll definitely want to look to those and reference those when it comes to connecting um, with your play in your discussion, your initial discussion that's due tomorrow night. So um, let's move on to the patterns of play. So we have attunement play first. So with attunement play, think of think of bonding. Um, so at three or four months of age, as mother and baby gaze into each other's eyes, the baby will smile and the mother will automatically respond with a surge of emotion and smile back. Um, so this is universal across all cultures around the globe. When this attunement occurs, both parent and child experience a joyful union, also called bonding. So this experience is um, definitely one of the most basic states of play, and it becomes a foundation for the much more complex states of play. 
with body play and movement, um, think about infants beginning to play and make sense of their bodies very early. Um, so squirming, crawling, um, perhaps putting things in their mouth, these are all ways of discovering their environment. So they are uh, intrinsic behaviors that promote exploration and learning. Um, so for example, the play-driven movement of leaping upward is a lesson about gravity as well as one's own body. And it lights up the brain and fosters that learning. So movement helps sculpt the brain and ready the player for the unexpected and the unusual. So as children grow, they are still doing this, right? Um, I remember when I worked as a counselor with elementary age kids, I would walk this boy who was about eight years old from the residential facility to the therapy offices. So I ask you this. So do you think that this boy, this eight-year-old boy, walked in a straight line? as we walked from the residential facility to the therapy offices, if you had to assume. Did he walk a straight line? Exactly, absolutely not. He touched everything and he swung around every tree and he zigzagged through the grass and skipped a step when climbing the stairs and jumping out of the way when someone would pass and so forth. His teachers often yelled at him when he would do that in line, for instance, at school, but I allowed him to make our walk very playful, and it started our therapy sessions in a positive, engaged way. So being able to just in that moment from one destination to the next, walking through the grass and trees, being able to build enough rapport, having just sort of that unstructured playfulness along the way um, definitely made all the difference. So then we have object play. So think of object play like problem solving. So our curiosity often drives us to pick up and about and play with objects in an innately fun pattern of play and creates its own states of playfulness. So hands playing with all types of objects or toys and finding ways to use them helps brains develop beyond strictly manipulative skills with play as the driver for this development. So there has been a connection found between problem solving and manipulating objects. So kids that fix things or take things apart and explore uses for them may mean that they will be able to solve concept problems more readily as an adult. And then we have social play. So from the simplest of wrestling of young animals to the most complex banter of close friends, social play is a key aspect of play behavior. Uh, children that play together are learning a lot about empathy, setting healthy boundaries, listening and communication, which are all social skills that we definitely carry into adulthood. Now with imaginative and pretend play, imagination is perhaps the most powerful human ability. It allows us to create made up realities that we can explore without giving up access to the real world. Throughout life, imagination remains a key to emotional resilience and creativity. So for instance, children playing house or playing school, in this pretend play, they can act out what will be eventually real life situations. So with transformative, integrative, and creative play, definitely want to think about trying out new behaviors. So sort of, um, you know, whether those behaviors are like in the picture, you know, something that is more physical and seeing and sort of testing the limit of what your body can do. Um, and then it can come back to, you know, trying new, trying new skills and tools, playing with new software, things of that nature because the play is all about trying the new behavior. So it's freeing us from that usual uh, pattern of doing things. So children are always in the process of changing and becoming um, through that fantasy play. So sometimes it can go unnoticed. For adults, maybe um, daydreams give rise to new ways of 
doing business, perhaps. Um, fantasies may lead to new love, for instance. Um, that visualization may lead to a remodeled house or perhaps a new invention of some sort. Um, so that creative play takes our minds to places we have never been before. All right, so I want to test our knowledge, and we are going to, um, I'm going to have you guys, I've seen the clip before, I hope that you enjoy it, I really love it, it's a fun clip, it's one of my favorites. Um, we're going to watch a clip to which we hear two children playing naturally. Um, it's kind of a funny context, um, which you guys will see, and so hopefully that gives you a little bit of laugh break after running through all of the concepts that we have. Um, but as you're watching, I want you to see if you can identify what patterns of play you notice in this clip. So let's head over to the material section again, but this time let's watch the kids snippet cooking video. And when you're all set after the few minutes of the video, go ahead and type pancakes in the chat box. Great. Oh, what'd you say, Teresa? Oh, I love those guys. I've seen a couple of their other videos. 
Yeah, I just, I laugh. I've seen this video so many times, but I could watch it over and over again. It's just, it's great. So sometimes when I'm in a moment where I just need to, to laugh or kind of veer off from what I'm doing at my desk, I definitely love to go watch those guys and their clips. They're great. So if I introduce something new, then fabulous. Now you, now you have something where you can take a little bit of a play break for yourself. And then um, it's always nice to see that, you know, that, there's always some folks too that have seen their videos and stuff before. They're great. So what patterns did you guys, um, did you guys notice in the video? What patterns of play were present as you guys were working through that video? So they definitely had some object play and the um, the tools and stuff that they were using, right? And yeah, there was that creative aspect as well. So if we think about like imaginative and pretend play and then that social aspect too, right? Their interactions with each other and then trying something new. So it's a really great example of all of the patterns that we were just talking about. And exactly, yeah, so I see that um, that the reading as far as module one, the freedom from time. So not really focusing on that as well. So definitely, yeah. And like I said, it's a great example of the patterns that we were just talking about, exactly object play. So all of them were present. Um, so it's a really great few minute clip that just kind of gives us an example of each of them um, in full force, as well as being enjoyable. All right, so our research about play, a little play definitely goes a long way. Um, so now to get more into detail about how you can play as an adult, um, we'll look at the research behind this as well as things that you can begin to do now to incorporate even more play into your life. So play as a concept is often thought of as something that children do, like we were mentioning. However, the truth is that the elements of play stick with us well into adulthood. So in his book, Play, author and psychiatrist Stuart Brown compares play to oxygen. He writes, it's all around us, yet goes mostly unnoticed or unappreciated until it's missing. So this might seem surprising until you consider everything that constitutes as play. So play is art, play is books, movies, music, comedy, flirting, daydreaming. So not only can play bring us joy in our adult lives, but it can also reinforce valuable abilities such as problem solving and creative thinking things that we've been mentioning throughout, right? So the research shows us that some very valuable benefits of play as adults. So here are some lifelong benefits of play. So play connects us to others and strengthens our sense of community. It can heal disagreements and emotional wounds and improve the quality of our relationships overall. Play fosters creativity, Play fosters flexibility and learning. Play stimulates our imaginations, helping us adapt and solve problems. So play arouses curiosity, which leads to discovery and creativity. So the components of play, curiosity, discovery, novelty, risk-taking, trial and error, games, social etiquette, and other increasingly complex adaptive activities are the same as the components of learning. So play is an anecdote to, um, to loneliness, to isolation, anxiety, and depression. So, you know, when we're thinking about those on that mental health side, so when we play vigorously, we trigger a mix of endorphins that lift our spirits and distractions that distance us perhaps from pain and fear and other burdens that might be taking place. So, and when we play with other people, whether they're friends or they're strangers, we were reminded that we are not alone in this world. So we can connect to others in delightful and meaningful ways that banish that loneliness. So play teaches us 
perseverance as well. So the rewards of learning or mastering a new game and teach us that perseverance is worthwhile. Perseverance is a trait necessary to healthy adulthood and it's learned largely through play. Perseverance and violence are rarely found together. So all in all, play makes us happy. So beyond all these excellent reasons for playing, there is simply that sheer joy of it, going back to the joy that I was talking about at the beginning of the session. So play is a state of being that is happy and joyous. Jumping into and out of the world of play on a daily basis can definitely preserve and nourish our hearts and the hearts of our communities. So definitely a little play goes a long way. Um, we don't need to play every second of the day to enjoy the benefits. Um, in Brown's book, he calls play a catalyst. A little bit of play, he writes, can go a long way towards boosting our productivity and happiness overall. So the, op the opposite of play is not work. The opposite of play is depression. Brown says that in his book. Um, when do we feel the happiness, the happiest, excuse me, like when is there uh, variety? When is there change? Um, when we are challenged and accomplished, if we are um, burdened by an overwhelming sense of responsibility, again, going back to that, you know, sort of the weight of the world on our shoulders, then this brings us decreased happiness. Society tells us to be successful, um, we don't have time for play, we have to hurry up and get there. But really, when we think about it, get where? Where are we trying to get? If we give up play for so long, how will we be able to enjoy whatever those goals are that we're trying to achieve? So food for a thought there. Um, how will we know when we get there? Or are we just aiming to fill our lives with more to-do lists, more tasks, and a never-ending um, goal to be the bigger, better, you know, make more money, etc. cetera. Um, and then at the end of the day, at the end of all of that, you know, will any of the money, bonuses, or good grades matter if our hearts are not truly in it? Um, will it matter if we have a constant feeling that is something, you know, that is perhaps missing from our lives? So I want to head over to the material section again and have you all watch Never Leave the, P the Playground. Um, so it should be our final link over there, Never Leave the, P the Playground, and go ahead and, um, you know, let me know when you're all set. Type done, something of that nature in the chat box.
Uh, welcome back. Nice to see that you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, it's he's just um, his ingenuity is definitely fascinating. I love that clip. So everyone's play is different. Um, so uh, some of you may be thinking, well, no problem there. I feel great. I'm good to go. And some of you may be thinking, well, man, how do I get that feeling back? Um, I want to feel that energy and I want to feel that joy. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how Brown says that we can get it back. Um, it sounds like I'm telling you to just go outside and play hopscotch every day and it'll bring back this sort of sense of playfulness to your life and I wish that were the case and it was that easy. There's definitely not any one uh, miracle strategy that works for everyone. Um, again, because everyone's play is different and how we feel connected and you know that uh, emotional connection to it and how it makes us feel in our mood and our attitude towards it. Um, so it's definitely going to be up to everyone individually to sort of seek that out for themselves. Um, Brown does give these suggestions to uh, get you back on track, so to speak, to reconnecting to those emotions experienced in sort of that true play state. Um, you know, so let's look at a few tips from the experts here. So you have to get rid of the guilt or the feeling that you are wasting your time. Remember, it is helping all aspects of your life. Remember that play is important for all aspects of our lives, including creativity and relationships. So give yourself sort of that permission, if you need to, to play every day, to engage in something, um, you know, that you feel connected to every day, something that you find enjoyment out of. Brown also suggests you look to your past for play memories. Um, what did you do as a child that excited you? Did you engage in those activities alone or with others or perhaps with both? You know, how can you recreate um, that today to reconnect with those emotions? Um, so remember, it's not necessarily so much focus on the actual activity, but it's on that emotional connectedness, that feeling we're receiving by the engagement. Um, you know, sure, the activity comes into play with um, thinking about what we might like to do or what we feel most connected with, but really more so focusing on that emotional connectedness connectedness, excuse me, during the actual engagement. So surrounding ourselves with playful people. So friends and loved ones who are playful, a positive environment definitely supports your sense of play. Um, another suggestion is to play with little ones or pets. Um, I know I threw out, you know, having nieces and nephews and um, some of us having grandkids and, um, you know, maybe younger siblings, you know, kids of our own, that type, that type of thing. So um, I definitely have two for two for kids myself. Um, so being able to play, you know, with kids and pets and kind of surround us, um, you know, with that positiveness and reconnect, so to speak, with our inner, our inner kids. Um, so playing with kids helps us um, experience the magic of play through their perspective. Um, sometimes I know I find myself saying, you know, kids say the darndest things. They're going to be 100%, right? Um, so anytime you think play is a waste, remember that it offers some serious benefits for both you and others. Um, so as Brown says in his book, play is the purest expression of love. Um, Brown does stress that we don't need to play every second of every day like I was mentioning. Um, you only need that little bit of play to boost your joy, your creativity, and your happiness. So just carving out, you know, that time on a regular basis. So it's really, um, it's just a start to help you get back on track if you've kind of, you know, veered off of that playful track, so to speak. So just to reconnect you. By taking the time to play, you have the ability to clear your mind of clutter and the stress and the negativity that sometimes we can find ourselves focusing on again. Um, so with a new, uh, renewed sense of optimism and creativity, sort of that breath of fresh air. All right, so today we we took a quick look at play history and examined some patterns of play and properties. Um, so that way, 
we can understand a little bit more about what play really is all about and how it can be valuable to us as adults. Um, we also took a look at the overall importance and, you know, what constitutes as play. Um, again, remember to rely more on that emotion connectedness than the actual activity itself. Um, so I'm hopeful that you got a sense of how you can begin to incorporate more play into your life if you've been feeling as though, um, you know, as you've gotten into this class and starting to look at the material, if you feel that that's lacking, you know, on some levels, hopefully, you know, this month really um, brings about a lot of opportunity to re-engage with, with these concepts and these ideas. So as far as our um, material goes, is there any questions that maybe popped up that um, I didn't see in the chat box um, that we you know, need to revisit or as far as the reading goes. Um, and we can kind of separate that and move into any questions about the activities next. But I just wanted to make sure that you all um, were good to go when it comes to the material we've covered and so far what you've been um, seeing in your reading. So if you could, um, no questions? Okay. And of course, if something comes up, um, you know, Find me on find me on instant message as well. I have I chat evening hours, um, but or later afternoon like evening hours. But you'll pretty much find me on there um, anytime I have my computer open. So definitely don't be afraid to hop on and ask me a question or you know shoot me a message you know through the platform as well, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can um, I can get to that and I see it. So definitely don't hesitate to reach out if something comes up even after the session. All right, so I always like to bring up um, just some friendly reminders that we have our initial discussion post due tomorrow, Wednesday evening. Um, so definitely if you haven't had the chance to formulate that, um, the Discussion post you'll notice is open every um, week through Sunday, and that's so you have time to go back in and make your um, response post to your peers. 30, um, 30 uh, points out of your overall grade each week on the discussion post is um, providing peers with feedback and suggestions and asking questions and interacting on that board. So 30 points is pretty significant. So definitely make sure that you are not only making your initial discussion post, but you're also engaging with your peers. If you were to miss the Wednesday initial discussion post deadline, you can still post between Wednesday, um, you know, that deadline and on Sunday, but you would just want to make an extra, um, an extra response post to appear. So for instance, I would be looking for your initial post and you would normally make two re reply posts to your peers by the Sunday deadline. I would be looking for that third post to appear and that would recover the 10 late points for posting after the Wednesday deadline. So, um, so again, bringing about that sense of flexibility. Um, I know we all have different schedules and we're trying to hop online when we can and um, no problem. Problem. You know, that's why we try to provide as much flexibility. So aim for Wednesdays for your initial discussion post. And, you know, while you're in there, I always tell folks, if you have classmates that have already posted, why not just make your, you know, response posts while you're in there? And then you can kind of check that off of your to-do list and move into focusing on your quiz and your challenge project. Um, and your quiz and your challenge assignment are due every Sunday evening. Um, so, you know, kind of figure out time management wise what's going to work best for you. Um, that's why I try to hold the go to trainings earlier in the week. That way, as we can at least jump in and start looking at stuff together if you haven't had the chance to. And um, then you can kind of run with it. And as questions come up, I'm available and I can answer those for you. Um, let's see. As far as. Um, as far as your deadlines, uh, the only additional activity that you have due tomorrow evening in week one, every week is your discussion, your response posts, your quiz, and your challenge project. But in week one, we have a library um, activity, and that's just so you can get acclimated with the library. Um, that's really my full intent with it. Um, it links you over to, uh, I send you sort of on a scavenger hunt to find 
the article the case for play but I'm also wanting to build on those library resources that you um, were getting acclimated with last month in digital literacy and so take it a little bit further and have you go um, seek out an article specifically and get to know the library that much more just so you know and have that as a resource and a tool moving forward in future classes so that is the only thing different that you will see about week one versus the other weeks which is that additional um, library research activity due tomorrow evening. Um, let's see. I just want to throw out the quick reminder. All of you came, um, so I definitely appreciate you carving out some time to meet with me for our first live, ses live session. On the LMS, um, I did want to point out, I mentioned at the beginning of the session, Go take the survey that I posted in there on our weekly um, reminder board. It's up in the uh, intro and weekly buzz section. Um, in with the go to training um, link for the YouTube, I included a survey because I want to see what times work best for you all for the go to trainings. So I propose some times for Tuesdays and Wednesdays. That way um, I can try to be as flexible as I can with your all schedule. Um, so I connected with someone already and um, they felt that maybe even like um, starting maybe even an hour later might work better um, for them. So I'm trying to gather some some more uh, feedback there. So if you wouldn't mind, that'll be open through Sunday. And I would like to go ahead and close that out on Sunday. That way I can go ahead and schedule the rest of our go-to training sessions for weeks two, three, and four. So everyone can plan around that. Um, okay, I'm going to go back over to the chat box. A um, question about the scavenger hunt. Uh, the instruction page has a place to upload something to submit that activity but we had a quiz let's um, I have the no you don't have to upload anything for the scavenger hunt um, it is set up as a quiz and let me I can pop over here um, you might your screen might look a little bit different than mine just kind of a disclaimer there because I'm on the instructor side but let's go ahead and open that together just so I can make sure I'm answering your question fully So let me scroll down to um, preview. Preview is as close as I can get to the student side. Um, so it should show up and here I'm giving you the answer. So you all came so you can have the answer to the first one. Um, so, um, so it should show up as multiple choice. It shouldn't show up as something that you have to um, submit, you would go ahead and click on your answers that you want for the activity. And then at the bottom, you would go ahead and submit when you're done answering the questions, but you wouldn't actually have to upload. Uh, 1.0, we're in level 1.0 right now. So you mean the activity prior to it? The first level 1.0, it's a two part activity. So are you referring to the first portion? OK. Here is just the instructions portion. So let me click on the preview so you see that. So this this is just meant, yeah, okay, no worries. Yeah, definitely. I want to make sure that no one's missing anything either. The first part of the training level, they're both level 1.0 um, because it's a two part. Um, the first part is to reference the library video from DGL and then to give you the download instructions here with the screenshots of how to navigate through the library resources. And then once you find the actual article um, in the library, then you would move on to the second part of the activity, which was the quiz, um, the quiz that I had just pulled up. So this level 1.0 training library research activity. So does that make sense? Oh, where it says drag and drop. 
okay, yeah, I see what you mean. The drag and drop is because um, is because I provided the tutorial there. So you won't always have to um, you won't always have to submit something like a file. It depends on how the instructions of something is set up. And not just for this class, but, you know, also moving forward with getting acclimated to the portal. So, um, so here, so sorry if there was any confusion with that. You wouldn't actually have to drag and submit anything here. Um, you would actually just use that as reference and instructions, and then you would go and take the quiz because you'll notice that the weight for this activity is zero, whereas the weight for the actual activity that's graded is 4%. Okay, it won't give you the green check mark. Oh, okay. Well, on my side, um, my side here, you'll notice um, just a little background um, to show you the instructor view. I, as as you all complete activities this month, it will show up as green, and then what'll happen is when an activity expires, they'll be. Um, this similar, like number one, it would it would have the same thing to the right in red, for instance. So what I try to do so that way you are seeing what you've completed and maybe what you missed completed is I go in and I will actually manually grade these for you so that way even activities that are a weight of zero percent will show up as an A on your side on the student view and then that way it's an indication of okay I completed that activity for instance. Um, so what I'll do is go in and for instance these that have popped up since the last time I did it, I'll go in and I will actually manually complete those and put a weight of 100%. It doesn't count towards your grade, but sometimes I know for me, it's nice to see that green check mark like you were saying on the other side. <laughs> so, um, so look for that and see if once I do that, it goes ahead and changes for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I hope that helped to clarify. If anything else comes up with that, definitely let me know. Were there any other questions in regards to your um, activities that are due either Wednesday or Sunday? <clears throat> Okay, if you want, you can type the question in the chat box or if you want to raise your hand, um, I can always unmute you. Sometimes that's easier. It's whatever you prefer. Tina, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. You can always, okay, you were typing. Um, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, okay, perfect. Um, let's see, can you do, okay, so are you um, referencing like uh, the video that you posted to share with us on the show and tell board, for instance? Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, it's something that you, you can do. Um, which I'm just trying to get kind of like a visual of um, what option you might be looking to complete. So that way, were you looking for the Playhouse Rocks or were you thinking of doing the industry presentation? Yeah, the activity overall. Okay, option one. Okay, so you were planning, let me pull up. So you were planning on doing the Playhouse Rocks activity? Yeah, so similar fashion to what you showed with us on the show and tell board, if you want to further your skills in that area, we we're talking about, um, you know, challenging ourselves with new, um, with new like technology, whether it's web tools or other software that we wanted to play around with a bit more. Um, this is definitely the month to go ahead and do that. So if there's certain skills that you're trying to master when it comes to that, um, and definitely feel free to incorporate some of that into your projects. So I would say 
um, with that, as long as you're being mindful and with your creative vision, you are able to incorporate um, all of the concepts that you need to and execute it. You could totally use that um, for your for your short film animation. Awesome. Yeah. No worries. I'm glad we could connect on that. That way you can kind of let your creative juices flow and see see where it takes you. And if you change your mind, that's absolutely fine um, as well. You're not, you know, you're not committed, you know, to this, uh, to how you want to do it just because we talked about it or um, because we're talking about it in relation to this assignment. All right. I saw that um, that you guys had a uh, others had no further questions. If something came up, just throw something out real quick in the chat box. I definitely don't want to end the session and have anyone feel like I'm hanging up on them um, or raise your hand. If something comes up, I was mentioning for those that kind of had to pop in after, um, the session's recorded, so I'll go ahead and archive it and add it to our YouTube playlist if you missed some portions of the session and the links that I refer to um, that were in our materials list for this session will be located in the description under the video on YouTube. So just refer to them there and um, and definitely take a look at all of the activities and if there's any questions that come up um, most of you who have reviewed my iChat hours and my office hours um, usually when I'm working and have my computer open I can definitely you know feel free to reach out on iChat um, I usually update my status if I'm in a meeting or something of that nature um, so definitely don't hesitate to reach out with questions and so forth I know I've been interacting with some um, via the message feature already on our platform so that's that's another great way and um, hopefully everyone got my email as well that I pretty much will send messages out and post on our community board versus uh, a bunch of email blasts. Um, that way I figure at your time, your leisure, you can go ahead and log into our platform and you can review anything that you need to catch up on at that point. Um, so again, I encourage everyone to fill out that survey link just so I can better uh, be flexible with what your needs are for our days and times for GTT. I totally appreciate you carving out some time to meet with me during this first session. Um, I'm super excited to work with you guys uh, this month, so definitely appreciate your time. And keep me posted with anything, and I hope to see you guys next week if you can make it. So have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing our board and what you guys choose to create for your projects this Sunday. Bye, everybody.